Um, okay, this is going to be my, my last poem now. Um, I've had like a really weird, just to go, <laughs> thanks for coming to this therapy session. <laughs> um, I had, <laughs> I've had like a really weird, a lot of weird feelings about poetry lately where I've been kind of really down about it and just like felt really disconnected from it and been questioning why I do it and all those kind of things. Um, and felt, yeah, very like, uh, very down about it all. So this is really nice being here and like being a room full of like incredible people, uh, which really made me feel really good. Um, but yeah, but I wrote this, I was thinking, why did I start writing poetry? I wrote started writing poetry about like a year and a half ago. And the reason I did was because my job was so stressful and it was cheaper than therapy. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and this is one of the first kind of poems that I wrote in that. And I, t I, I just, yeah, it's about a young person. It's about a session that I had and it's just quite a special poem for me. So I'm gonna finish on this one. It's called Liquid Tabs. I knock on your door and you open it. You, five foot two, dressed head to toe in grey, today you smell like sickly sweet pineapple soda. You are 13, ADHD, NWT and alive, survival is how you thrive, you are young, black and beautiful, generations of pain bear down on you, but you don't care. Your hands are full. You greet me at the door, holding two bright blue aerial liquid tabs like what you put in the washing machine. I ask why. You say, yo, Liz, feel them. They feel like so nice, like feel them. <laughs> so I like feel them. <laughs> and they do actually feel really nice. <laughs> I've never really thought about it before. Look, if you mess with them too much, they'll pop, I say. But the self-soothing illusion of smooth blue in your hand is just enough to help you understand what happened to you. What happened to you? I know. You know I know. I don't know if you want me to show that I know, so we skip around the subject like three grids in a row and we're at Weatherspoons. Not the usual choice to take a 13-year-old for a one-to-one -one session. Just want to say that as a caveat. But knowing about the untold confessions you have to lay down in front of me and empty spoons will do. You won't let me buy you a Coke. You say the prices are a joke. You pull me to one side and you go, Yo, Liz, yeah. You know, when we started our session, Jay, he said, I've got to be honest with you about stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And basically, yeah, I was down the high road, yeah. Like, how can I be on the high road and I go into Poundland, yeah, and they got a whole display of Lucasade in the window, yeah, and I take one, yeah, and I put it in my bag and I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank you for your honesty. We sit down. So I need to, like, talk to you, innit? I know. I say. Look, I didn't know he was filming, yeah. I'm not scared. I know. Silence fills the space you leave and I hastily and inadequately fill it with affirmations and platitudes. I tell her she isn't defined by it, maligned by it, she is not a victim of it, she's a survivor and you know, it's not just you, just look at the news, it's people like me too and it's... She's staring straight ahead. I just went to his house, she says holding the liquid tabs. I just wanted to hang out, she says rubbing the liquid tabs. I just I said, don't touch my hair, she says, squeezing the liquid tabs. I just didn't want to be there, she says, seizing the liquid tabs. I said, stop kissing me, she says, clasping the liquid tabs, clasping the liquid tabs, clenching the liquid tabs. We are now drenched in liquid tabs. I said, stop. And you wouldn't stop. Tears are halted in their tracks and we sit back in shock. In this moment of sheer, surreal, chemical blue madness, I'm trapped in anger and sadness, and at last, I start to wonder if this gloopy blue shit is gonna give me a rash. <laughs> I go to the bathroom, get some toilet roll, begin to wipe us down. And as I'm wiping her down, she starts laughing. She's laughing and laughing, I'm like, what's so funny? She's like, yo, Liz, smell me. <laughs> and I'm like, that's breaking some kind of safeguarding rules. So I'm like, no, she's like, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Smell me. Don't I smell pain now? <laughs> it's like, yo, fam, take my phone, yeah, put it on Snapchat so everyone can see how pain I smell. <laughs> and I look at her and think, your innocence was stolen, caught on camera. You're 13 and a statistic gone viral in this sick world we live in and you smell like fresh linen. That t-shirt you wear tinged with grey from the life you wade through day after day is now laced with electric blue splatter. And it doesn't matter to you. What happened to you? 
could happen to me, to her, to him. We are all the pop skin of an aerial liquid tab and you, five foot two, dressed head to toe in grey. Today you are anointed in ocean fresh blue, blessed to survive, born to thrive. You are 13, ADHD, NWT and alive. Thank you so much.